Hello, my name is Henrique Ferrolho and I'm a PhD student at the University of Edinburgh in the UK. In this video, I'm going to be presenting you the work that me and my colleagues have prepared for ICRA 2021, the IEEE International Conference on Robotics and Automation. Let's get started. Our work discusses the use of either inverse or forward dynamics in direct transcription formulations. The real question being addressed here is, how should we enforce nonlinear system dynamics, particularly indirect methods for trajectory optimization, such as direct transcription? In order to appreciate this question, we should first understand direct transcription and what an optimal control problem is. So that's where we will get started. Usually, an optimal control problem is posed by the initial state of a system, a desired final state, and the dynamics of the system itself. Then, the goal is to find a control trajectory as a function of time which drives the system from the initial state to the goal state. Often, we also consider an objective function to be either minimized or maximized. The picture on the right is a long exposure photograph of a rocket trajectory. Landing a rocket stage is an example problem where optimal control can be applied. For the rest of this presentation though, we'll be focusing on solving trajectory optimization problems in robotics. For that, we first need to be able to describe our system states and controls. For example, for this fixed-based robot arm, a state is given by its joint positions and velocities. We can change the state of the robot by applying torques at its joints or by applying external forces to the links of the mechanism. And finally, the dynamic properties of the system dictate how those torques and forces change the state of the system. This is given by the equations of motion of the robot highlighted here. Now that we can describe the states, controls and dynamics of the robot, we can move on to direct transcription. Direct transcription is a powerful technique for solving optimal control problems. I'm going to use a short animation to explain how it works. Consider these two axes. The horizontal represents time, and the vertical represents the state of a robot. This means that while the horizontal axis represents one dimension, the vertical axis can represent multiple dimensions. Direct transcription works by splitting time into segments and representing the state of the system at the beginning of each segment. It also represents the control inputs to the system, which determine how the state evolves during their time slices. When we try to solve an optimization problem, we usually start with an educated guess of what the trajectory looks like. However, these guesses do not have to be accurate. In fact, more often than not, they will not be physically feasible due to state mismatches from one time segment to the next. These mismatches are called dynamics defects. On the plot, they are highlighted in red. After transcribing the optimal control problem and providing an initial guess for the trajectory, we end up with a mathematical formulation of a non-linear programming problem. This is then passed on to a numerical solver which solves the optimization problem and closes the gaps in the process. Once the segments are connected, they should represent a feasible trajectory for the modeled system. To better approximate the nonlinear dynamics of high dimensional systems, trajectories are discretized using small time steps. In summary, direct transcription discretizes the trajectory in time and takes the state of the robot and the control inputs as decision variables. Then, it tries to find a trajectory that satisfies the system dynamics as well as other task related constraints. Now that we get the idea of how direct transcription works, let's have a look under the hood. More specifically, let's see how we define mathematical constraints that enforce the nonlinear dynamics of the system. Going back to this plot, what we're trying to achieve here is a way to quantify the inconsistencies between time steps. If we can quantify them, then it is just a matter of asking the numerical solver to bring those defects to zero. For now, let's focus on only one of these inconsistencies. Here, the blue circle at time step tk represents the state given by the joint positions and joint velocities. Q and VK. The blue line coming out of that circle shows how the state progresses over time as a consequence of the torques and forces applied to the robot. The red diamond represents the state where the robot ends up according to the decision variables from time step TK. Whereas the bottom blue circle represents the state of the robot at that point according to the decision variables from time step TK plus 1. The red line represents the mismatch between the evolved state and the discretized state. In other words, there is a redundancy in the representation of the trajectory, and so we must ensure that this representation is not inconsistent. In order to quantify the dynamics defects, we need to solve the forward or the inverse dynamics problem. Both these approaches stem from the same equations of motion for rigid body dynamic systems. By rearranging the terms, 
we can solve for joint accelerations given the joint positions, velocities, torques and forces. This is the forward dynamics approach. Alternatively, we can solve for the joint torques that are required to achieve some desired joint accelerations, given some joint positions, velocities and contact forces. This is known as the inverse dynamics problem. Now that we are equipped with these two tools, forward and inverse dynamics, we can define mathematical constraints to enforce the consistency of the trajectories being optimized. In this slide, we can see the intermediate variables that are required for each approach, and last but not least, the NLP constraints that must be specified in the problem formulation. After transcribing the rest of the optimization problem, we can then pass it to an optimization library. During optimization, solvers will then perform a numerical search to find the most suitable values for the decision variables. Importantly, while they are doing so, they also ensure that the trajectory represented by those decision variables respects the equality constraints that enforce dynamic consistency. Let's now move on to the important question. Which of these approaches is the best? Is it the one that calls the forward dynamics function? Or is it the one that calls the inverse dynamics function? And why are we asking this question in the first place? Well, we are asking this question because we care about efficiency. And what motivated us to investigate this issue further was some recent work from ICRA and IROS 2019. In these two papers, there is a table and a couple of plots concerning performance benchmarks of algorithmic implementations from state-of-the-art rigid biodynamics libraries. One of the trends observed from those benchmarks is that inverse dynamics is faster to solve than forward dynamics. Please note that these benchmarks measure the performance of a single call to inverse or forward dynamics algorithms. However, when we formulate and solve trajectory optimization problems using direct transcription, at each solver iteration, these functions may be called hundreds or even thousands of times depending on the duration and discretization of the trajectory. And that is only for one single solver iteration. In reality, solvers take several iterations to find an optimal solution, depending on the quality of the initial guess for the trajectory. So, we wondered if the benchmark results from previous work would translate to trajectory optimization problems. We also wanted to know in what ways do the different approaches affect the solver and the resultant trajectories. I will now reveal our results and then proceed to explain the experience that led to each of our conclusions. In summary, we have found that direct transcription problems formulated with inverse dynamics were faster to solve, more robust to coarser problem discretization, and took fewer iterations to minimize the cost function. In our first experiment, we compared the total computation time taken by the two alternatives. The results are shown in this big table. I will now explain how it is organized and hopefully we will be able to read it together and take the relevant conclusions out of it. There are three main sections, one for each robot class, the robot arm, the quadruped and the humanoid. The details behind the tasks for each platform are detailed in our paper. For each robot, there are two sections, one concerning forward dynamics and one concerning inverse dynamics. This column tells us which linear solver is used for the experiment. The next six columns show the different strategies tested to update the barrier parameter of the interior point method. Finally, the last column is just an average of the previous six columns. As you have probably guessed by now, the proper way to read this table is by considering a pair of the numbers pertaining the same linear solver and update strategy. So, for example, these are the forward and inverse dynamics results for the Cook arm using the MA27 linear solver and the adaptive update strategy for the barrier parameter. We can see that inverse dynamics was approximately two times faster than the problem formulation using forward dynamics. We can continue down the column and see a similar result for other linear solvers. Please feel free to pause the video at this point if you would like to continue examining this table. In this slide, we present the results that allow us to conclude that inverse dynamics formulations are more robust to corset trajectory discretization. On the left, the plot shows the root mean square error of the joint positions, velocities, torques and contact forces for a jumping quadruped robot. We can see that as the discretization frequency decreases, the error from both approaches increase, as expected. However, the rate at which the errors increase is significantly different. Trajectories optimized using inverse dynamics remain closer to the baseline trajectory. Moreover, the table on the right shows that the total time and number of iterations required to solve the optimization problem decreases monotonically for inverse dynamics. In contrast, forward dynamics does not seem to reflect an obvious pattern. Finally, we compared how both approaches performed when a cost function was considered. The plot on the left shows that inverse dynamics reaches the local optimum in fewer iterations than forward dynamics. And the plot on the right shows that the number of iterations required to reach feasibility was less for inverse dynamics than forward dynamics. In conclusion, the results from the previous slides show that inverse dynamics surpassed forward dynamics in all fronts, 
Therefore, we should use inverse dynamics to enforce dynamic consistency in drag transcription formulations. I will conclude this presentation by showing videos of robot experiments that were recorded to validate the execution of trajectories optimized using inverse dynamics. In the first video, we see the quadruped robot Animal B performing a jump in place, and again in slow motion. To control the robot, we first plan the trajectories and then we play them back on the hardware without replanning. The controller feeds forward the optimal torques to the actuators and feeds back on the reference positions and velocities. The contact forces from our plan are not used by the controller. In the second video, we see the same robot jumping forward by exactly 0.5 meters. Despite such a simple controller, we were pleasantly surprised with the tracking of our trajectories. Finally, we also tested a jumping motion on a full-sized humanoid. The control law was the same used for the quadruped. The jump might be small, but this motion is very close to the limits of what can be achieved on this robot, due to the high inertia of its electric motors. Nevertheless, we can reproduce the jump multiple times without the robot failing. This is the end of the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me by email. If you are looking for an efficient open source framework to optimize motions of robot arms, please check JL, which is linked in this slide. Among many of its features, it allows users to optimize trajectories using inverse or forward dynamics, just like we did in this paper. I would like to end by thanking members of Julie Robotics, especially Tuan and Robin. And finally, a huge thanks to my co-authors, Vlad, Wolf, Yanis and Setu. Thank you.